Good morning. Glad to have you all here this morning at Newman Lumen, a Thursday inspiration. And Eden, thank you so much for your beautiful music to begin this morning with. Um, that was Eden by herself. She switched her order of her program as um, Austin was coming from class still. So um, that was uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness, and she will conclude a little bit later with uh, My Lord, What a Morning. Uh, it's my delight this morning to introduce to you all Danielle Biggs, who I spend some time with each week as one of the Truett Center interns, the spirituality and the arts intern here uh, in the Truett Center for Religious and Spiritual Life. And uh, she's a delightful young woman who I enjoy getting to know and spending time with. And I am very intrigued by the title that she has given for her, her piece, Guess What? I Love You, a story about a girl on a mission to laugh, live, and love. So Danielle, I look forward to this. Danielle Biggs. Good morning. Good morning. And happy Thursday. <laughs> I'm a little bit shorter. Thank you, Adam, for that beautiful introduction. And thank you, Eden. And eventually, thank you, Eden and Austin. I'm so excited that you guys are our musical guests for today. And thank you, everyone, for making your way out to Newman Lumen this morning. My name is Danielle Monique Maria Effia Biggs, but most of my friends and family just call me Danny. I'm a junior or a third year student here at Elon University, and I'm double majoring in dance performance and choreography and arts administration. Like Adam said, I'm also the spirituality and the arts intern right here at the Truett Center for Religious and Spiritual Life. Isn't this such a beautiful building? I love working here. I'm usually the girl who arranges the artistic guests every week, such as Eden and Austin. And I'm typically the chick who's behind the scenes doing some of the work with my fellow interns and student workers. So it's really an honor to be here standing before you, sharing my story. This year, the theme of Newman Lumen is reconciling lives, personal stories in the search for multi-faith understanding. When Adam first asked me to speak today, my mind raced. I had no idea what to speak about. My personal story currently spans about 20 years, and it's packed with all types of life lessons and embarrassing, very embarrassing situations, and all of the many other kinds of hilarious Danny happenings, as my family and friends like to call them. Before I dive in, I do have to help you all wake up a little bit. I know I get sleepy during some speeches and lectures. This is something that I learned while studying abroad in Ghana this January. That basically means I have something to share to which you respond, you're ready to listen. I'm going to say three things in the language of Ga. It's a traditional language spoken in Ghana. And after I say each, I want you as loud as you can to yell, Yao! Okay? Let's try it and say Yao. One, two, three. Yao! That's good. All right. Cha omanyeba! Yao, cha omanyeba. Yao, cha, cha, cha omanyeba. Yao. Fabulous. Thanks. Just something I had to do. <laughs> so let's go. My story, my life, and all of our lives, I believe, are just that stories. Now, I'm the type of girl who loves personal life stories. I learn from them, I laugh at them, I relate to many of them, almost all. If we had all the time and the resources and the means to just sit here all day and swap life stories, oh my goodness, I'd be so excited. But to be honest, I have to run to my sociology class after this, and I don't think my professor would enjoy that. So I figured while I'm up here, I can offer you my story. My story begins in what I consider to be the greatest state in the country of the entire United States of America. New Jersey. Sorry, North Carolina. But anyways, I was born and raised in the suburbs of central New Jersey, surrounded by friends, food, family, and a whole lot of love. My mom and dad raised me in a very non-denominational Christian home, where church and religion, and maintaining a strong relationship with God, was and still is everything. I grew up in the church. Church was where I met my first friends at age zero, where I first fell in love with the art of dance at age two, 
and where I first gave my life to Jesus Christ, only at age three. My childhood spent in church chronicles the makings of who I am today. Above everything, growing up in church and obviously growing up in New Jersey taught me how to love. Love has never been a foreign concept to me. You see, in the Biggs household, we have a couple of unwritten rules that I learned at age zero and that you'd learn after only spending about 10 minutes in our humble abode. Number one, we love the New York Yankees. So if you don't, you can get out. <laughs> Just kidding, but not really. <laughs> Number two, when you walk past someone, say, hey, what's up? even if you literally just saw them two minutes ago. And number three, above everything, always, always say I love you. Before heading to bed, in passing, before racing in the pool, while stuffing your face in the kitchen, like me, before shoveling snow, and say it like you mean it. It's not possible for that statement to be worn out or overstated. This third rule was ingrained in me the day I was born. Even in Sunday school at church, we learned about God's love for us, how we should love others, even our enemies. Love, love, love. For my entire life, I'd been stunned by the element of love. I've had conversations with all types of people about it, what it means in their religion, their culture, their own life. It interested me that love was something that everyone longed for, but at least here in the States, something that makes people a bit uncomfortable, especially when it comes to loving out loud. We walk past each other without saying hello. We ask surface questions and don't really take the time to get to know each other. It's sad. As you may have read in the program this January, I studied abroad on a performing arts and culture trip in Ghana. My professor, Jason Arya, directs his own professional dance company over there called Africa Alive Dance Company. My fellow Elon classmates and I had the opportunity to go on a professional performance tour with his dance company. We performed all around Ghana. It was really a phenomenal experience. During the trip, many people came up to my classmates and I and expressed their love for us. They loved love for how we danced, love for how funny we were, love for how kind, love for how funny we looked doing their dances sometimes. The outpouring of love from people we had literally just met was overwhelming. People could actually love others just for who they are, just for being who they were. Say what? We were shocked. I remember performing at an elementary school for a large group of students. After the show, my classmates and I were able to dance with the students. Two young girls walked up to me and asked to dance with me. Of course, I'm a dancer. I love kids. Of course I said yes. To this day, I don't know their names and they don't know my name. I don't know who their families are and I don't know what they've done. I don't even know how many times they've gone to get something sweet to eat even after mom and dad said to go to bed. I don't know. But I do know that as soon as it was time for me to leave, we had a huge group hug full of girly giggles. And right before we walked away, they both tapped me and said, guess what? We love you. I laughed, and I blew a kiss, and I ran to catch up with my classmates. Post Ghana, I've been even more open to love. It's the one thing that never gets old. These young schoolgirls showed me that loving others is really an easy task. All you have to do is open your heart and just do it. Let me throw back to some of my Sunday school lessons. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast. It is not proud and it does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongdoings and it does not delight in evil. Love rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and love always perseveres. It doesn't matter how long you've known someone or how well you know someone. It doesn't matter if someone is of a different race, ethnicity, religion, gender, sexual orientation, political party, and even for me, 
even if someone is not a New York Yankees fan. Throughout my life journey, I've learned and I am learning that in this crazy world full of crime and hatred, it's way easier and much more meaningful to just love. So I challenge you, step outside of your comfort zone. Tell someone you love them. Maybe you love how they dress or how they smile or how unique they are. Maybe you love how they make you feel. And maybe you love them for no reason, just to love them. Find something that you love about someone or someone's or yourself and let them know. You'll definitely make someone's day and maybe even their entire life much brighter. Well, that's all I have for today, folks. Oh, but guess what? I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Danielle, thank you, and I think I can speak for all of us when we say that we love you, and we love what you're sharing with us, so thank you so much. After we're done here, there are refreshments out in the entryway, and uh, I call your attention to a few things going on in the back of your handout. Uh, tomorrow night in here, if you need something to do, there's a Lunar New Year celebration full of um, food from different Asian cultures. Um, Saturday night, there's a mystical poetry night. Uh, Monday, there is both a World Religions Whirlwind Tour and a Southern Black Baptist Mock Wedding. So before we get there, we want to hear uh, from Eden again and with Austin this time. So uh, turn it back over to you all. Thanks for being here this morning. Oh uh -huh.